ionization branching ratio control in helium with the resonance at a second clock by Luca Argenti and Ava Lindroth. This work was presented in the Atto Second Hot Topic session at the 10th edition of the European Conference on Atoms, Molecules, and Photons, held in Salamanca, Spain, in July 2010, and is now published on Physical Review Letters, Volume 105, Number 053002. In the next 12 minutes or so, I will try to convince you that auto-ionizing states can be used to control ultra-fast photofragmentation processes. As we know, the motion of valence electrons in atoms and molecules takes place on the attosecond time scale. For example, a localized hole, created on one side of a small organic molecule, can migrate to the other side in just a fraction of a femtosecond. With the ultra-short light pulses, which are available today, we can hope to monitor and control such motion. However, to design and interpret experiments with these aims is very difficult. This is so, because short pulses means high energies and large bandwidths. Atosecond pulses, in particular, bring atoms and molecules into the ionization continuum. A continuum crowded with metastable states, which greatly complicate numerical simulations. A good example of this is provided by a recent XUV pump IR probe study of the dissociative photoionization of H2. The atto second XUV pulse creates a dissociative wave packet and a later intense IR pulse probes it. The molecule eventually dissociates and the interference of different dissociation paths results in an asymmetric ejection of the photoelectron with respect to the heavier molecular fragments. Metastable states have a crucial role in this process. And indeed, the reproduction of the experimental results required one of the largest quantum mechanical calculations ever. To clarify the role of metastable states in the ultrafast dynamics initiated by attosecond pulses, we decided to investigate the simplest system where such states occur, helium. Metastable states of helium are formed when both electrons are promoted out of the 1s orbital. This is why they are also called doubly excited states. These states are metastable because when the two excited electrons collide, one electron can spend its excitation energy to kick the other electron out of the atom. Generally, doubly excited states are observed as resonances in energy resolved measurements of a total photoionization cross section, like this one. To resolve the resonant profiles of the spectrum, the radiation must come in pulses which are much longer than the lifetime of the doubly excited states. What happens then if attosecond pulses are used instead? Not only these pulses are shorter than the lifetime of a single resonance, but their spectrum is in fact even broader than the energy span of a whole resonance series. To answer this question, we will examine the following pump probe process. First, a short XUV pulse will excite a coherent superposition of doubly excited states as well as of direct ionization states across the N equals 2 threshold. Second, after a certain time delay, a short and intense IR pulse will probe the metastable wave packet. The doubly excited states will be strongly affected by the IR. In part, they will be ionized to the 1S channel, which is also the auto-ionization channel. In part, due to above threshold ionization, they will be ionized to the 2S and 2P channels. Finally, other doubly excited states with a lot of different symmetries will be populated too. Let's see how we organize the simulation. We expand the wave function on a B-spline close coupling basis, which comprises the 1S, the 2S and the 2P channels, and we enclose everything in a radial box, 800 atomic units large. Starting from the ground state, the wave function is propagated in time, under the action of the external laser field. To prevent reflections at the box boundaries, we include in the Hamiltonian a complex absorption potential. At the end of the propagation, we extract the fully differential, partial photoelectron distributions, by projecting the wave function, onto a set of multi-channel scattering states, which we obtain by solving the lippmann schwinger equation with the K-matrix method. Let us look at the photoelectron spectrum immediately after the XUV pulse. 
you will see three columns. They correspond to the 1S, the 2S and the 2P ionization channels. On the Y-axis, you have the total energy, and on the X-axis, you have the cosine of the ejection angle. The largest contribution to the ionization comes from the direct ionization in the 1S channel. On top of it, you can see several phono profiles, which are due to the doubly excited states. However, there is a faint, direct ionization signal, also in the 2S and 2P channels. Keep this in mind, because this detail will turn out to be crucial. The fast electrons from the direct ionization in the 1S channel will rapidly run away from the atom, leaving behind a coherent superposition of doubly excited states. In the present conditions, two states in particular are more populated than the others. Therefore, we expect that they will dominate the dynamics of the whole wave packet. Now, let us look at the same process, but from a different point of view. That is, how the electron density evolves after the XUV pulse, in two different regions. One close to the nucleus, where the doubly excited states are concentrated, and one far from the nucleus, where the photoelectron is essentially free. Here we go. At short ruddy, we clearly see a large breathing motion, which we get because of the two doubly excited states that we mentioned before. At large ruddy, we see the big bunch of electron density from the direct ionization, followed by a series of wave fronts. This means that the metastable wave packet decays by ejecting electrons in bursts. We can estimate the Weber number of these bursts, it is some 0.078 atomic units. Now, if only one doubly excited state were populated, we would expect a continuous electron emission. However, since two resonances are populated, the two emissions interfere, and this is precisely what we observe.